Hello, my name is Serge Borso, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about SSH. This may be your first time ever using the protocol slash tool slash client slash server, <laughs> and I want to make sure that you have at least some foundational knowledge about how to use this tool. All right, so what I have here on the screen are the three kind of basic things you're going to need to know in order to connect to an SSH server. And there are a couple of assumptions here. As you can see in this demo, I'm already going to have a server that's running SSH. I'm also going to turn one on later so you can see it for yourself. And then I also have an SSH client, which is built into Windows. So not too much of an ask. All right. From there, we need to know a few different things. The machine's IP address that we're going to SSH into. We also need to know the username to log in with and have a password or a key to log into that server. Okay. Let's start off over here inside of the world of AWS. There's one machine that's currently running. Okay. So this is a Linux machine. It's an Amazon Linux instance. And I'm gonna obtain the IP address by simply scrolling over and noting it right here. Also, you can clearly see it's right here. And I'm just gonna simply copy this IP address with the control C command. And then I'm gonna open up a Windows command prompt by holding the Windows key and pressing R and then typing in CMD for the command prompt and pressing enter. From here, I'm going to type in the standard syntax for SSH which is SSH space, the name of the user at the IP address. The name of the default user for an Amazon Linux machine is EC2 dash user. And then the at symbol, and I'm simply gonna paste in that IP address. Okay, now let's, before I press enter, go back over here and look. The IP address that was easily obtained from the AWS console. Okay, go to AWS, go to your console, go to your instances section, of EC2 and you can obtain your IP address from your machine. No problem. The username, like I said, there's a default username that comes kind of with an uh, Amazon Linux machine as well as other Linux machines within AWS and Azure for that matter. The password or the key. This I didn't show you, but I will in a moment. This machine already has a password that I've set. And now when I press enter to log in, one more special thing is gonna happen. And it's gonna ask me to verify the authenticity of this fingerprint. I'll simply say yes. And then I'll be prompted for the password. We'll type in the password. And then from here, I should be shown the login page or like the, the default login screen for this Linux machine. And this is validation that I've successfully logged into the machine. As you can see, I have the prompt right here. All right, that's password-based authentication using SSH. Let me quickly show you doing the exact same thing with key-based authentication. For that, I'm gonna go ahead and start up another machine here in AWS. I'll call this SSH dash test key. And I'll simply click the launch instance. This isn't a big tutorial on how to launch an EC2 instance or really talk about EC2 so much, but um, I will show you how to do this. All right, from here, we'll create a new key pair by choosing the create new key pair option. And for this new key pair name, I'll just call it once again, SSH dash test key. And the default RSA and .pem files are perfectly fine. From there, I'll choose create the key pair, and then I'll finish this process right here of launching the instance, but not before I highlight something very important, which is note this ssh-test-key.pem file was automatically downloaded to my Windows machine. Very important. I'll get back to that here in just a second. But for now, I'm gonna choose to launch this instance. And then once it starts up, we're gonna SSH into this machine exactly the same way as I did a moment ago. Only this time, I won't be using a password, I'll be using the SSH key. With that machine being up and running now, or probably pretty close to up and running, I'll click on it, and I should be able to obtain the IP address of this machine. I'll simply scroll to the right once again, copy this IP address right here, and then I'll go back to my Windows command prompt, and I'll do something slightly differently this time. First, I'll log out of the machine I'm currently in, and then I'm gonna CD to the downloads directory. This is where the key I just downloaded resides at. Now, if this is not familiar to you, simply look at it yourself in your Windows Explorer. And you can see that there is a .pem file that was just downloaded. So what I need to do now is change the syntax of SSH ever so slightly to account for this actual key. What does that mean? SSH space minus I, the name of the key, which is SSH-testkey.pem. Now, I'm not gonna type all that stuff in. That's not necessary to do. I'm gonna use tab completion and say SSH tab, okay? 
minus I means identity, as in SSH, run the command SSH, minus I with this identity, which is a, a private key, and then space the username, ec2-user, at the IP address, which I copied a moment ago. Press enter, and the exact same thing shows up from before. It's a different machine, a different fingerprint. I have to say yes to accept that. And then from there, I'm logged in. That's password-based authentication with SSH, as well as key-based authentication with SSH. In a very quick tutorial, probably a lot more we could cover here, but feel free to pause, rewind, and rewatch to learn more.